Hey, it's Vanessa Joy, and I'm here to show you the brand new released Fundy Designer Suite version 10. So I am sitting here, and really what I thought I'd do is I'd compare the new, well not compare, I'd create a video with the new Fundy Designer Suite off the fly. And I wanted to combine this video with showing off the new features of the Fundy Designer Suite and actually creating an album for you and walking you through the process of what it's like to create an album. How do you pick pictures? What does a design session look like? I'll talk to you a little bit about that. And then what kind of control should you have as the photographer versus what you're giving to your client? client. Very important. So let's jump right into it. So I got Fundy open here. This is going to be Lindsay and Aiden. All right, just making a new project here. I'm going to go ahead and go into the album. By the way, you can design your studio magazine here. That's how I design mine, which you can download in the link below so you can see what you can do, what Fundy can do for your studio magazine uh, that you can send out and do whatever you want with it. You can download mine in the link below if you want some inspo. But we're going to go to new album. So we got Miller's here, which is obviously already one of my favorites. I do love Miller's um, and the other lab, in case you're curious, the other labs that I use frequently, it's Floricolor in Portugal and the other one is Picto Books, which you can also see I favorited. All right, let's hit nest. I usually design um, in thin pages actually because of how many pages I design. So we do thin pages and then I design for a 12 by 12. Most of my clients have a 10 by 10 album that comes with their package. A lot of them upgrade to 12 by 12. So just kind of like designing at the max resolution that I can and I can always go down from there. I know there's a little bit different with the bleeds and things like that. I can always, you know, adjust that. With Fundy, if you don't know, you can always just adjust the album size. It's not like a huge thing. I go for a basic cover just because when they come in, I have no idea what cover they want. They get to choose any cover that they want. All right, that's the thing with me. I do not charge for covers. I do not charge for any different cover. I don't charge them for any album company, at least at the time of this recording. I just want them to have whatever is it that my clients want, you know, as, as their album is. So I go with basic cover because that's something they're just going to choose in front of me and it doesn't really affect the internal design, which is really what I'm concentrating on here. Wedding album. All right, so create album. Now this is where we deviate a little bit and go into my photos, which I have not picked yet. So we're gonna go into Lindsay and Aiden. That's the last wedding I did. We're gonna go into JPEGs and we're gonna drag all these not into Fundy. Okay, we're gonna drag all of these into Photo Mechanic. Now you may have a different theory about what I'm about to say. I believe in pre-designing albums. I believe in pre-designing them, one, because they look a hell of a lot better when I am picking the pictures or my team is picking the pictures versus when my client is picking the pictures. No offense, clients, I love you, but I've collectively designed hundreds and hundreds of wedding albums. And not to mention, even if your client is good potentially at picking the pictures, that is a huge task. And that is probably, I would venture to say that is the number one reason why so many couples never design their wedding album or designed it years and years after the wedding. That is not advantageous to you. One, it's not advantageous to you because by the time you're done designing and printing the wedding album, it's five years later and the cost of your wedding album has gone up versus, you know, when they first had it. I pre-design them, not even thinking about how many pages are already included in their collection. The way that I phrase it is 10 by 10 album with 30 pages towards the album. I do not want them to have a 30 page album because, well, I can't say that. Some albums do tell a story fine with 30 pages, but normally, uh, not. And so I don't think about how many pages that they have. Do you think about how many pages that they have when you're photographing that wedding? No, you photograph the entire story. It's the same thing when it comes to designing the album. You design and tell the entire story. If they choose to delete some of the story of their day, that is their choice. And honestly, I don't think it's up for you to decide. So that's my thing. I'm gonna go through Photo Mechanic and I'm just gonna pick all of the pictures. Now, starting off, I tend to like having uh, an intro page. We have all the little details here, some of each, and I just kind of pick my favorite stuff. I am thinking about the stuff that's gonna look good together on a page. So all the ones that just pick so forth, they're probably gonna go on the first page. These are, by the way, in chronological order. 
Um, so that's just how I'm looking at them because that's how they are here. I tend to do this very quickly. Most photographers, after you've been doing it for 700,000 years, when we get to this part of the day where you start seeing people and telling the story, you know, that that's up to you, but you obviously want to tell different parts of the day, the getting ready, the girls hanging out, love these pictures, anything artistic, obviously, you're going to want to throw in, and then anything with other people. I'm big on having other people in the album. A bride and groom is not just a bride and groom getting married. It's about their friends, their family, all the people that they want there. You will also notice that I have here both black and white and color. Um, black and white, the way that I do it, it is a duplicate of the image. So you see these two right here, they're duplicates. I always pick the color because Fundy will let you change to black and white later. And one of the new features in Fundy version 10 is that you will also be able to change the exposure so things end up matching a little bit better. Obviously, any little groups of photos, you know, if they bothered taking them the day of, then they probably want them in the album, or you should at least suggest that they go in the album. You painstakingly, not necessarily painstakingly took them, but you took the time to take them, so put them in the album. Sometimes I go through and like, I just saw this picture of the dress and I remembered, oh yeah, we photographed it later because this wasn't the best place for it. So I'm just gonna take that out and only use the ones from later. These shoes also are the correct shoes versus the other ones, but maybe we want to photograph all of them. Now, I wouldn't worry so much about whether you're getting like the perfect shot of each of them. I would more concentrate on, again, telling the story. You can always swap the pictures later. Guys, this is a pre-design. This is not the final one. Yes, you wanna suggest the best pictures here, but ultimately it's not the end of the world if you happen to not choose the best one. I go through this album with my clients later when they're sitting in front of me so that we make sure everything is the best. And I don't think it's wise to spend a lot of time on it because ultimately it's not about what you think it's the best, it's about what they think is the best. And they're the ones that are ultimately going to decide that. I also like to make sure that I am choosing a variety of landscape and portrait images so that it works together nicely on the page. Just as a side note, these were all edited by Freedom Edits. They're a post-production company in the UK. I did not edit these. I'll pull up the pictures that I edited for the same day edit later, and you will notice they are crazy inconsistent because quite frankly, I'm good at taking pictures. If I do say so myself, I am not so great at editing them. Every once in a while though, I do pick a photo of mine that I've edited because I've taken a little bit of extra time. For example, this photo right here, I know I took extra time to really pull down the sky. Uh, in the circumstance and even it out. So I'll go back, I'll show you those later too. The whole goal here is just telling the story of the entire day. You might think I'm going through this really quickly and I certainly am not doing it slowly, but it's not about getting the perfect picture. It's about setting up all of the different places uh, to tell the different parts of the day. I love taking all the bride's headshots, pulls together really nicely in an album. Details are really important. You wanna make sure that you get all of the details that they spent all this time deciding and spending their money on. So I like really going heavy on the details. Family pictures, I try to get like one of each of all of the mains, um, but sometimes people just want one big group picture. These guys definitely had a good amount of pictures as far as the families go. So I have a feeling they're not gonna want all of these. Usually when I sit down with with the client. I have an iPad and all their pictures are up there. And when we get to the families, I just say, hey, look at all the pictures we took. Tell me which ones we're putting in. And then I just readjust those pages because it's pretty easy to do. When it comes to the ceremony, this tends to be the smallest part of the album. I know, I know it does. Not by my, my call, it just overall, that's what I've noticed. It tends to be the smallest part of the album. Uh, so as we go through, I'm really just looking for those key moments, obviously, you know, her walking down the aisle, him walking down the aisle, and sometimes, you know, not even that, but we've got like him walking down nicely, some hugs from mom and dad. We've got the girls walking down. Obviously put all the ceremonial parts in there. This is a Jewish ceremony, so there are certain parts that you know you wanna add, like them walking around each other, drinking of the wine. This is one of my favorite moments right there. Obviously things like the ring exchange, the kiss, the smash of the glass. All right, on to cocktail. I always pick just like the most colorful food, whatever looks the nicest, little past hors d'oeuvres. And then we've got some of the reception stuff here. The reception stuff, I like to get close up and far away. 
obviously all the little details that were available to photograph and then wide shots you know overall shots of the entire room try to include some smiling faces in the cocktail hour shots as well these are being shot at the same time and if there's groups great get some groups in there too again these are all people they love as far as the reception go we just want to get the main things have them walking in doing their first dance and now we're on to the horror. Usually not the most attractive thing to photograph somebody up in a chair. At least not if you're standing right underneath them. This was a smaller spot, the Chapin Hill Mansion, so pretty difficult to get a little bit further away and still be in there in all the action. I like to be in the action. And then dancing photos are really just looking for, you know, stuff with a lot of energy just to show what the party was like and of course you know if i see groups of people i'm gonna throw groups of people in there too and we have toast make sure i get each one of the speakers hopefully some reactions of people smiling and laughing and not just the bride and groom other people the guests as well and if you can grab a shot of the glass that's always nice too i do like getting some shots of the band they usually have good energy this is hank lean sugar lean by hank lean i do put the food in there sometimes if it looks pretty but if i'm making something for the album I'm sorry for the haul then I definitely will and another speech and cake cutting okay so let's see what we ended up with I don't know how long that took probably too long 227 images so here's when I would go through and just give it like a once over make sure there's not too much of one thing like I don't need two of these ring shots and I'm just gonna do one of them just taking out the redundancies here pictures that are like eh, not so great I already took out 20 images so let's just go with 256 so we can drag all of these photos right into there and they are gonna start loading you must be thinking oh great now we have to get in the whole album design but I promise you picking pictures is actually longer than it takes to design in Fundy why because we can sort these by the date they're taken I'm gonna leave them how they are because that's exactly how they are. Oh, I just wanna pull in a couple more pictures because I know I have just a few favorites here that are a little bit different as far as editing goes. This was the one that I was mentioning before. You know what, it doesn't even look that good because there really was zero detail in the sky. So we're just gonna leave with what I have. This was the other one, but I like their job fine. And then this is probably the only one because I got a little crazy with all the stuff. So we'll just do that. Oh, maybe this one. I did some dodging and burning there. So we'll just add those photos. We have all the photos that we want in here. We go down there to auto design. Let's see, realistically, let's just go for 100 pages. I wanna include all the images, no min, no max. Now a couple of things that I do at this point. One, I come up here and I like to have a little bit more of a gutter and all the images, so I do that. And now I just start dragging and dropping. You start with the first one here. I can drag stuff over to one or the other if I want, or I can just hit shovel and wait till it finds something I like, like that. That looks good. I think I like that picture best, or maybe the rings. Yeah, they like the rings. So that's like his stuff and her stuff combined. That's cool. This is her, this is him. So like you'll have to drag, uh, sometimes if you know pictures were taken around the same time, we're gonna drag pictures that are her, like and keep those there. And then the ones that are him, you'll have to separate those just a little bit. You could also swap these, by the way, swap, swap. And some of the new features, by the way, is you can come to any one of these drag 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 and change aspect ratios that way which is pretty freaking cool and you can keep stacking so there's a column right there i can just keep stacking into that column to no end definitely like having our guy here maybe we'll just kind of fit that there nice and big that's a fun group So some guidelines that I am looking for when it comes to designing an album, I wanna keep the same types of colors on the same page, but every once in a while you get something like this that happens and it's a little bit darker than the other ones. Well, because it's an entirely different building. So as much as you can balance your photos, sometimes they're just different. So the fun part is with the new version of Funny, I can go ahead and change the exposure right here. There we go, and there is our Exposure correction. Let's close out of that. And now these look a little bit better together. Another thing you want to make sure is there's no faces going through the creases here. If it's a little ear like that, it's not the end of the world to me. We gotta make some changes on this page anyway, because we got a pretty bride still getting ready here on the guy's page. So now that you know pretty much what I'm looking for as far as all of these different things go and what, what we're looking at, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this album design and you can watch.
I also like mixing up to have some full spreads in there as well, even if they're asymmetrical to um, avoid cropping it or avoid putting anybody's faces in the seam. And we're done. That ended up being 106 pages, which honestly, it would have to be a two volume album. Notice I'm not blinking at it though. I don't know what it is lately, but the last album session I had, she had a total of 134 pages. So we made two approximately 70 ish page uh, albums to volume set so don't limit what your clients may or not want it's always easier to start with more and then just delete what they don't want and help them tell the story than to be adding stuff back in so i've taken a look at some of the things that have are have been new to fundy not everything if you want to check out more of what's new with fundy you can go to the link that's listed below but other than what i've already mentioned which is the exposure correction uh, and I mentioned the being able to mix and match and move around your custom and then drop and drag within your drop zones. Those are all things that we mentioned here. Endless columns and rows, we did that. Uh, we've also got a custom image order, which we can move things around. You did not see me do that. New custom slideshows, those are cool. Very cool. And a new theater mode. To be honest, I don't use theater mode that much, but that's just because most of my clients are Manhattan clients and pretty much don't have wall space. <laughs> um, the partial design thing is really cool if you are looking into especially the branding design. I highly suggest taking a look at that. You can download mine in the link below, but I hope you've taken a good look at what I do when I'm designing a wedding album, picking pictures. It's definitely a lot of work. I actually do outsource this. So, um, this was actually a treat for me to do it for myself for once. Um, but uh, Fundy makes it really easy actually to have design files go back and forth too. I use um, a designer in South Africa and I am in the New York City area. I'm in Jersey. So she designs it and then sends me the document file and I just resync the images on my end, sit down with my client and then go through and make the album theirs. So hit the link, subscribe, do all those things and uh, I'll see you next time. Oh my god, stop. Mm. Good smile at the end. That's all.